you know where my phone is? Um, I cannot really tell you what this next piece is going to be. So, you're going in blind, just like I am. <laughs> we are in the same position, we are equals here. <laughs> Inspiration points. Uh, I know I want to make is a little fitted crop thing top crop top <laughs> let me have a quick think and get back to you give me five seconds I'll try and find good hold music for you just one second <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for holding. The text is as follows. <laughs> Unwilling to respond. Unable to ignore. So I'll probably use like a 8mm maybe? 7 or 8? Those are my first thoughts. Um, I'm gonna pack my bag. I'm gonna go to the studio. I'm gonna edit my last video. Get that ready for you. And then we're going to begin this next piece. Here's my revelation for the week. Sleep. Early nights. Dude. Wow. <laughs> I've been awake at 7 o'clock every morning this week. And Friday, which is today, 6 a.m. I take sleepy drugs at night time. Like, sedatives. They knock me out. <laughs> I also have a chronic tendency to continue working at night time as in sleeping but I'm still working I'm like knitting in my head or I'm writing songs or I'm drawing or I'm planning something I was taking my drugs too late and then so by the time the morning comes around they haven't had time to wear off and so I wake up feeling like an actual zombie I've been experimenting this week with taking my drugs at 8 p.m. and I've been waking up at 7 and 6 and I'm shocked. I haven't felt this way in years. I've been going, getting up in the morning and doing yoga. I never thought this could be me. If there is one thing my autistic little brain needs out of anything, it is sleep. If she doesn't have sleep, things are bad. My emotional regulation? <laughs> Not with these 8pm bedtimes. <laughs> I thought I'd just share that with you. If you guys haven't tried to sleep, try it today. <laughs> oh god.
I'm 25. Before I go, let me show you what I've done. <laughs> I got my knitting out and I was like, I'm just gonna start a row, just to test, you know, test out the thing, see if I get it started, like the right length and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I obviously kept going. You didn't miss much, it's just a single like panel with some decreases that I've just started. Why do I always put them on my head? When I am freehanding, of course, there's an element of the whole point of it is that you don't have to count stitches or don't have to count rows if you don't want to. Um, but with things like two panels, um, especially if there's shaping involved, I do like to note down what row I started decreasing at or increase or, you know, just so that it can actually like still fit. <laughs> It's easier to do it as you go than at the end to try and like find the decrease row and be like, okay, that was number blah blah blah. blah. Um, it just kind of saves you off butt a little bit. But also, if I stop in the middle of a session and I haven't finished it, um, and I'm in the middle of like some decrease sections or increase sections, I can make a note of like this is the row that you've stopped on, and you, when you start again, this is one you need to do. <laughs> So that's what this looks like. If there's no decreasing and I want things to be equal sleeves or something, I do sometimes use a row counter or you can use the measurement approach. And so when you make your panel, you just say, okay, this first panel, or this first sleeve is 30 inches. So when you make your second one, you just keep going until it's 30 inches. Um, I prefer using a row counter for most of the things because I do like it being exact especially with sleeves and stuff like that, but yeah. So yeah, that's where it's like, um, I bring some of the thinking and the planning into freehand is with this kind of stuff. So at the moment I'm on row 28, so I'm gonna do one more decrease row and then one more pearl row and then probably check it if, it, if the length is kind of looking okay, I'll probably bind off on row 30. You also don't have to uh, count anything if you don't want to. It doesn't um, have to be equal or even if you really don't want it to, so that's also fine. But yeah, making little notes like that is sometimes helpful, so then it can still be like polished if that's what you're going for. I think that I'm going to do the text with this red yarn just for kind of like a smack of colour. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with like an embroidery situation. And if it looks shit, then I'll do um, duplicate stitching. Part of my process, seems that this is what this is about, is trying to prevent getting burnt out or overtired and overstimulated. Just pushing myself too far. Just listening to my cues. Not very good at that. 
have I been waking up earlier every day feeling way more energized? Yes. Does it turn me into a supercharged neurotypical that doesn't have to manage every small task as a big task? No. It's like my brain has this emergency stop button that presses itself uh, and I don't realise it's been pressed until it's like all of the system has like <laughs> gone through the shutdown process and I'm sitting in the car on the drive home with still my work shift to come and I'm listening to Bo Burnham and just void of anything I'm just sitting there feeling nothing and just upholding the basic motor skills I need to drive a big dangerous vehicle and I was like, oh great, I still have to work. So, I'm taking my cues, alright? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, and I'm removing some of the elements, so I'm not driving to the studio today. Today, I'm just going to keep it chill enough. This is a part of my process, my work process, that I am still admitting is a part of it, um, prevent burnout. <laughs> Cause I really don't want to, I don't want to go through, I don't want to do that again. Working on this, I don't know how I'm feeling about it. <laughs> it's not, the word isn't done yet. I think it'll be okay, I don't know, I really, I don't. <laughs> I guess this is the part in the process that doesn't always happen but is happening this time of feeling entirely underwhelmed by your decision. <laughs> you can either change your approach or just stop and give up on it. <laughs> was fighting the urge to just give up on it. <laughs> it's not a very positive attitude. Um, and, you know, it's not necessary. It's just some rethinking needs to happen. To save me what ounce of patience I do have, I'm just cutting the tops of the duplicate stitches I know this is wasting yarn, but I'm also not in the best mindset right now and I don't want to make things worse for myself. Probably going to have a cry and then I'm going to get my butt back to work. I'm going to make something good out of this and I'm not going to give up on it just because it's testing me.